So we're going to talk about angles first. And we need a way to draw these angles nicely. So we're going to graph on the xy plane. And when we have an angle, our angle is going to originate from the origin. So it'll originate from 0, 0. And it's going to be drawn as uh, what we call a ray, or a half line. The angle that we want to measure is going to be right here. We're going to use the Greek letter theta. You're going to find that we probably use a lot of Greek letters this quarter. Uh, if you play Scrabble or Words with Friends or other word games, theta is not the best uh, for that, but there's weird letters like C, which I think is XI. That's a really killer word if you're into Scrabble. Um, what else is good? Uh, the whole Greek alphabet is good to know, but there's plenty of really obscure words that are two letters long, and there's one with X. All right, so we got theta is the angle right there. When we measure angles, we're really measuring the amount of rotation happening. So it's a measurement in a slightly weird way. We're used to linear measurements measuring on a straight line and seeing how far something moves across a straight line. But angles are a little weird. You're going to look and see how much something has rotated. So we're going to measure counterclockwise starting from the positive x-axis right there. So angle is measured. Counterclockwise. From the positive x-axis. You have been measuring angles for a very long time on a clock. So if I draw a really fast clock over here, now on your clock, generally you're going to measure how far you traveled clockwise from the positive y-axis. So you've been measuring angles a while, just measuring them rotating the other direction starting in a different initial position. So you can look at the clock. We usually count off of 12. We consider that as, or you can consider that as 0 whatever you want to think of it as. And then we measure how far something has rotated past straight up. And that tells you hours, minutes, depending on what unit that hand is measuring. So you've done this before, just in a very different way, rotating the other direction. So why are clocks made like that? Basically because somebody got good at making clocks and they made them this way. Why do we measure angles another way? Because people started writing this way, and that's just how it went. So just basically convention. There's no good reason other than convention. Well, it'd be weird to just randomly say, ah, oh, I'm going to just choose this angle as 0, and we'll measure from that way. I think up, down, left, or right are reasonable places to start. We're just starting from the right. So that's how we measure. Uh, we can talk about quadrants. So drawing quadrants, we have quadrant 1. I'll use Roman numerals, which are horrible if you go past about 4. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 is where it gets annoying. You've probably seen the quadrants labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4 and wondered why in the world does it go upper right, upper left, lower left, lower right? The answer to that question is because of the way we measure angles. And it's the way the angle sweeps out the different quadrants. So it goes through 1, 2, 3, and 4 in that order. So they're labeled 1, 2, 3, 4 just because of the way we chose to measure angles. So we measure angles counterclockwise. Now let's talk about negative angles. So negative angles the way they're going to spin is clockwise. So positive angles go counterclockwise. Negative angles are going to go clockwise. Uh, 
Ah, counterclockwise is too much to write, so we're going to write CCW and CW for clockwise. So counterclockwise and clockwise, two words we don't need to write again. All right, so that's negative angles. Now we need, anytime you're going to have a measurement, you need what we call units, or how much is one whatever unit we're going to measure in. So a standard unit would be rotations. So one rotation would get me back to where I started. So that would be a very normal way to measure angles. You can talk about how much of a rotation they are. So in that sense, a right angle would be a quarter rotation, and then a half rotation, three quarters, and one. So if you're into fractions and rotations, that's a perfectly fine way to measure. What we're going to use, the units we're going to start with are degrees. How many degrees in one rotation? 360. So that will be one full rotation. So the degree symbol it looks like a zero power. It is a zero where the exponent. It's probably not a zero. It's also not an O. I don't know what symbol we call that, but it sure looks like a zero or an O. So 360 degrees is one rotation. Now this is positive 360, so this is counterclockwise. So it's not just a rotation, but it's a rotation counterclockwise, the normal way. There are some other angles we know about in degrees. What's another famous degree measure measurement for an angle? 180. 180. So how what what does 180 relate to if we're talking in rotations? Mm -hmm. So 180 will be half. So you could use what I wrote down. We just said the magic word. Multiply the entire equation by a half. So 360 times a half is 180. One rotation times a half is one half rotation. And I'm going to get lazy and write rotation is rot. So 180 degrees is a half rotation counterclockwise. Now I just did some algebra. It was very easy algebra, but I multiplied the equation by a half. You're going to realize very soon that I write uh, algebra notation a little bit strange. I am multiplying both sides by a half, but you've taken algebra class before. You know I can't just multiply one side by a half and not the other side. So I don't need to tell you I'm multiplying both sides by a half because if I'm in a math class, I'm always multiplying both sides by a half. So I'm only going to write the algebra generally outside the entire equation. So I'm not going to write times a half times a half on both sides because we know because of our algebra class that of course I'm multiplying everything by a half. All right, what's another famous angle in degrees? 90. 90. And we can get that either by multiplying the 180 degree equation by a half or multiplying the 360 by a quarter. And this is one quarter rotation counterclockwise. And we draw a little picture of our angle. This is such a special angle, it gets its own symbol. We use a square instead of a uh, quarter circle. The 180 degree angle it looks like a hat. Full rotation is kind of silly to draw. It would just be a circle. There's not much going on with that guy. I guess you could draw it like that. Now we could go down to 45 degrees. There's other ones too that are useful. 30, 60, 90 is a, is a good triangle, but I'm not going to write them all down. So which of these should you remember? I would say remember the one that's easiest. This is the one that I think would be easiest to remember. 360 is one rotation. 
you probably already have this memorized, so you probably don't need to spend too many brain cells remembering this. So this is all degrees. Now, <clears throat> the old way to break down degrees is into minutes and seconds. So if we need to get more precise than just telling you it was 328 degrees, if we need to get very precise, uh, the way they used to measure is with minutes and seconds. Now, if you've done any computing in science class, you know going from minutes to seconds is horrible because it's base 60. So we want to use base 10. So we're going to skip minutes and seconds. And if you need something more precise, just use a decimal. So we're going to skip minutes and seconds. So it's in your textbook, but we're going to skip it. Pretty much the world doesn't use minutes and seconds anymore. If you look at GPS coordinates, they used to go in minutes and seconds, but we just use decimals now. It works out a lot better. So the next unit of measure we're going to use is radians. So before we get into radians, we should probably talk about what one degree is. So we talked about 360 of them all at the same time as one rotation. We talked about 180 and 90. How can I figure out what one degree equals in rotations? So I can start up here with the 360 equals one rotation counterclockwise. What can I multiply by to get to one degree? Or what can I divide by to get to one degree? How do I turn this number into 1? So divide by 360. So we just want 1 360th of this equation. So we multiplied both sides. So we're going to get 1 degree. We did that because 360 divided by 360 is 1. So we can talk about one degree. Well, how much is one degree? It's one 360th of the rotation counterclockwise. If you had a, a compass to measure angles, you could just try to tick it up to one degree. It's going to be really tiny. I think my pen is too thick to even draw one degree, but it's going to look something like that right there. It's a very, very, very tiny angle. So it's going to look about like that. So why do we choose 360 to measure uh, angles in? The only reason I can uh, come up with is, or that, that I've seen, is that there's a lot of factors. So why is there 12 inches in a foot instead of 10? Basically because there's more factors of 12. And for a similar reason, they use 360 degrees instead of something like 500 or 1,000 because there's a lot more factors in there. And so you can subdivide without actually, you can subdivide a lot more without using fractions. So radians is another unit of measure. It's going to be the one that we're going to use way more often. So to introduce radians, we're going to look at some geometry briefly. So draw a circle. I'm going to cheat and draw a perfect circle. You can cheat too. You have a, a mug or a coffee cup or a quarter, or if your highlighter is really big, you can draw a nice circle. You don't need to draw the best circles though. So this right here we call a radius, measure from the center over to the, any, any point on the side, that straight measurement is a radius. Now what I want you to do on your circle, think about the distance you just drew, this radius right here. Do your best to take that distance and wrap it around the exterior of the circle 
as far as you think it should go so that that curved distance is the same as the straight distance that you just drew. You could do this very precisely if you used uh, like a shoelace and a really nice big circle that you drew carefully with the center right in the center. You could do this pretty accurately. So that curve distance should be R. I think I should make this a tiny bit bigger. Maybe there. Maybe that's too big. It doesn't matter. We're just estimating here. And so that side's also going to be R, another radius. So we just created an angle right here. This angle we just created is one radian. So we just made a, an angle by doing our best to use R, the radius, as a measurement around the exterior, or as the uh, kind of perimeter measurement right there. This is called the arc length. So when you're measuring the perimeter of part of a circle, it's called the arc length. If you measure all the way around, we call that circumference or perimeter. So this is what one radian is. That's not terribly useful for our purposes. So let's figure out, I want you to estimate how many radians does it take to fill up a circle. You should not get more than 10, no matter what, unless you're really far off. But you shouldn't be getting that many. So do your best to estimate. I'd say there's at least three or four. So do your best to figure out how many. So copy, do your best to copy the size of this angle and fill in one. So figure out how many of these does it take to get around your circle. So the problem with having you do it while you see what I already drew is that my drawing will influence you significantly. All right, so if we count in whole numbers, if you have to give a whole number answer, who got four? Any fours? Any fives? Got one five, any sixes? Wait, was that for a five? five and <laughs> okay, so we'll say two fives. So sixes, any sevens? Okay, so I think I influenced you and drew my first uh, angle too big, and that made all of you draw them slightly too big. Uh, so the actual, the actual number is an irrational number, so it goes the decimal goes forever, but it's very close to 6.28. So if you did this very accurately, you should get a number very close to 6.28, so a little bit bigger than 6. Now, this is a decimal that goes on forever. And so what we do is say, oh, well, whatever this number is, we're just going to call it 2 pi.
So 2 pi is going to be the number of radians in a full rotation. So we can approximate pi. And of course, pi, if you spell it, is pi. Pretty good word in Scrabble. The Greek letter, the way you write it, is it looks kind of like an H with no antenna on it. So that's how you write a pi. All right, so who knows some more decimals after 3.14? One five, good. I think it was, does it go two nine? It goes something nine. It may be seven nine. Either way, it doesn't matter. Even if we know those decimal places, we could always go two more, two more, two more. Uh, so that's good enough for us. Most uh, the web work problems I have, if you do type in decimals, I think the uh, accuracy is you have to be within I think two percent or three percent of the actual right answer. So the way I have web work set up, you don't the homework server you don't need to get super accurate. So three point one four will work for most uh, decimal approximations. So that is the value of one pi is very close to 3.14. So let's write out the different uh, radian measurements as they relate to rotations. So we have 2 pi, we wrote that down as, so 2 pi was defined to be the number of radians for a full rotation. That's a good one to remember right there. 2 pi is one rotation. Another thing that we're not going to write down, we're not going to write the word radians as the unit. So when we're working in radians, we're not going to keep writing radians, radians, radians. We're going to basically default to radians. So we're going to skip writing that out. So if we would divide this first equation in half, or multiply by half, we have just 1 pi equals 1 half rotation. And pi over 2 divided in half again, 1 fourth or 1 quarter rotation counterclockwise. So these are the popular radian measurements. And now what we're going to do is relate radians to degrees. And we're going to use the uh, their relationship to rotations to do so. So the easiest way to do it, one rotation is one rotation. So we're going to start with that. So start with something easy that you know. So one rotation counterclockwise. is one rotation counterclockwise. So we'll measure in radians, one rotation is two pi. And in degrees, one rotation is 360. So two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. That's a good one to memorize. Also, pi is 180 degrees is another good one to memorize. So do you need to memorize both of them? Probably not. You remember, I remember one of them, multiply by two, you have the other, or divide by two and you'll have the other. So you don't need to memorize both, just pick your favorite and go with that. So we'll do our first example. When I do example problems, I'll write EX underline. That means I'm gonna do a problem that is similar to what you could see on a quiz or homework problem. So let's convert 30 degrees to radians. So 
So I could start out by writing 30 degrees down, but instead, let's write one of these two equations that we know. I'm going to use the one with the smaller degrees in it. Pi is 180 degrees. How do I turn 180 into 30? What do I multiply by? Tricky, tricky. So if you're doing an algebra problem, you're trying to solve this right here. So one sixth or six, depending on which of the ways we do this. So three times, uh, 30 times six is 180. No shame in setting up a really easy algebra problem and knocking it out. So multiply by a six. So we convert it to radians and our radian measure is pi over six radians. We absolutely could estimate where 30 degrees would be by trying to draw it. So if I wanted to draw 30 degrees, remember the top is 90. So I'd be going one third of the way to the top and one third of the way with rotations. So think you got a quarter of a pizza and you're trying to be fair and cut it into three equal pieces. So something like that, that would be close to 30 degrees. So that's how I would try to figure out uh, where 30 degrees is. Just think, oh, I know 90, no problem. I'm gonna do my best split into thirds. Any questions? All right, so I'll show you your homeworks tomorrow.